This is ABC 15 Mornings. Now at six, a standoff in Tempe. Ahead, what we're learning and how it involves our state's former Department of Corrections director. Increased and improved our, our level of talent and this year is the best lineup we've ever had. It's one of our state's biggest events and the excitement is building. We get an inside look as crews get ready for the Phoenix Open. Can't believe it's time already, but yeah. that's not even the only big event on the books this year. Later on, our Josh Figerio has a breakdown so that we can start making plans for the whole family. There really is something for cool everyone. Festival season is upon us soon. We say good morning to you dark and early, but we're glad you're starting it off with us as we get a live view of Tempe and the Mill Avenue Bridge. There are some cars out there on the move bright and early. I'm Nohalani Graf. And uh, I'm Mark Thompson. Speaking of big events, I was checking out social media the past couple days and I see this little baby up on his two feet <laughs> walking yes. around, taking steps, yep. pushing a little uh, thing. Actually, I mean, today my son cool. turns 11 months old, uh -huh. so we are on the brink of that first birthday cry, but <laughs> he did take his first I steps. Know. And like, so wow, we're in a ton of to trouble. See. Dad was That's a football was player. So next. yeah, the speed is yeah, already yeah. there. Your and uh, it's a good thing I got new shoes for Christmas because <laughs> I'll right. be putting them to use. Mm -hmm. If you are going to be putting on your shoes this morning, going out for a run or maybe even a hike, the temperatures are pretty mild and will be on the slightly warmer side today. But you are going to notice increased cloud cover, but we'll stay dry. 68 is at forecast high today. Then we get warmer tomorrow with lots more sunshine and a high of 71. As for right now, 50 degrees in the Phoenix metro area. We don't have any breezes to speak of, but it's still chilly out there. And as we get closer to sunrise, our temps will dip a couple of degrees. So hot coffee or tea might still be in order this morning to help warm you up because we'll be in those 40s through the nine o'clock hour across the state. We're a couple degrees above freezing in Flagstaff, but still in the 30s north of the rim. Central portion of the state in the 40s, although Payson has now dipped into the upper 30s, so a chilly start there. But overall, we're about 10 degrees warmer at this hour than we were 24 hours ago here in the valley. It's about a five degree difference uh, in the positive side here in the valley. So I'll walk you through the rest of that weekend forecast, show you what you can expect hour by hour coming up in just minutes. And we want to start with some breaking news right now out of Tempe. One person rushed to the hospital with some serious injuries after they were shot near 8th Street and Dorsey Lane. This happened just before 2 a.m. We're still working to find out if there are any suspects and what led up to that shooting. Now we want to get to your morning headlines. The three men convicted in the death of Ahmaud Arbery now receiving their sentences. Travis McMichael and his father Gregory were seen killing Arbery on video. They were both sentenced to life without parole. William Ryan recorded that video and he has received a life sentence with the possibility of parole. A New York judge dismissing a sexual harassment complaint against former New York Governor Andrew Cuomo. That was filed in October, alleging that Cuomo groped a woman who worked as his executive assistant. The DA saying his office would not pursue the case because it would be, quote, impossible to prove beyond a reasonable doubt. Cuomo is still the center of multiple federal investigations. Two lawyers arguing against the federal vaccine mandate in the Supreme Court are now presenting their cases remotely after testing positive for coronavirus. The Supreme Court hearing arguments on two policies, one requiring large companies to require vaccination, the other requiring health care workers to be vaccinated. Now to another big story across the valley. Retired Department of Corrections Director Charles Ryan in custody following a dramatic standoff at his Tempe home. ABC 15's Vinton Blandin with a look at what we know so far. Arizona's former Department of Corrections Director now at the center of a police investigation. A chaotic scene unfolding at the home of Charles Ryan off Warner Road in Tempe. Officers tell us they went to Ryan's home Thursday answering a call about a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Later learning it was Ryan who had shot himself in the hand. And when police got there, things got even more intense. Ryan's wife and daughter managed to leave the home unheard. But police say Ryan barricaded himself inside only to come out a short time later, pointing a gun at officers. The retired DOC director then running back inside. That's when a SWAT team and negotiators were called in. 
Ryan eventually came out and was taken into custody. He's now in the hospital under police watch. In Phoenix, Vincent Blandon reporting. And we are still working to learn exactly what led up to all of this and what charges could be filed. As for Ryan, he retired in 2019 as DOC director. His decision followed an ABC 15 investigation that exposed major issues at Arizona's Lewis Prison. We learned that many of the cells there inside that prison did not lock. Several assaults involving inmates were linked to those broken locks. So if you've been in Arizona for a long time, you know this date well. Today does mark 11 years since the mass shooting and assassination attempt on Congresswoman Gabby Giffords in Tucson. Giffords was holding an event in a grocery store parking lot, you might remember, when a gunman opened fire killing six people, wounding 12 others, including Giffords, who was shot in the head. Arizona Senator Mark Kelly, who of course is married to Giffords, says today is all about celebrating the lives of the people lost in 2011. We'll come together, you know, to honor, you know, the, the, the people we lost and, but also uh, I think it's important, you know, to just honor the Tucson community who did, uh, you know, really the best they as as a as a city really came together when that happened and what a journey and an inspiration former congresswoman giffords is in her recovery that does continue among the people that were killed that day also nine-year-old christina taylor green federal judge john roll and gabe zimmerman who was a member of giffords staff well this morning some startling video showing just a long line of cars snaking through a Tempe neighborhood as hundreds waited for a coronavirus test. It's just part of the reason why an Embry COVID testing site had to close Friday. Embry tells us that the high demand for the COVID testing and staffing, well, it forced that closure. People were asked to go to the Mesa Community College site instead. Embry told us they're working to reschedule for the future and in a way that prevents traffic jams that led to the five hour wait times that we saw this week. It's really unfortunate, but you know, it's commendable for the individuals who are waiting it out just in doing that due diligence and continued exposure to everyone. Embry is also trying to recruit more staff. They've increased wages to $20 an hour and added a $200 starting bonus after some 40 so hours of work. Well, it's getting harder and pricier to get Phoenix Suns tickets for the first time in a decade. That team is having to cap season ticket sales. Can you believe that? I never thought we'd see that day with the Suns. <laughs> they say demand is so high, in fact, that there's now a virtual waiting list to get tickets. Now, prices are based on demand and the Suns, they currently sit at the top of the NBA standings, the best team in the NBA right now. And if you want to check them out, they are hosting the Miami Heat tonight. That is, of course, if you can get a ticket. Well, today is your chance to get some of the hottest gear as well. The team shop getting a new shipment of the Valley jerseys. They've been sold out for weeks, but we'll put the new shipment on sale here shortly. But uh, you don't need me to to tell you, you got to get there early. That shop, it opens at 10 in Jersey's. They're expected to sell out quickly. Uh, they'll also have some uh, new Valley gear that you may not have seen before up for sale as well. Especially those Chris Paul, Devin Booker. Oh, man. Jersey's, man, those. Those jerseys are so they cool. So they fast. did a good job on those jerseys. When I moved sure. here eight years ago, you could go to a game for 20 bucks. <laughs> 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 they have come yeah. a long way. That's basically what that means. The Waste Management Phoenix Open is also just weeks away already, and construction of the Bird's Nest concert venue is also underway. That, of course, is where the nightlife happens after the party on the green at the People's open. Our Claudia Rupsich went inside the bird's nest and has our first look at the venue. This place will be packed with music and crowds starting February 9th through the 12th. You can see it's a work in progress. The stage will actually be behind me. Organizers tell me they're expecting about eight to 10,000 people out here each night. Across the street from the golf tournament, crews are working hard to get the bird's nest ready. Everything's back. Tournament chairman Michael Golding says they're happy to bring back the venue. The concert series was canceled last year due to COVID restrictions. This year we have no restrictions. We have 200 acres. It's uh, it's 
you know, open air, uh, everything is outdoors. And so we're excited to have an event like we all know and love. Golding is most excited about this year's performers. Four nights with big names on stage. We've in increased and improved our, our level of talent, and this year is the best lineup we've ever had. That includes Diplo, Sam Hunt, McLemore, and Kygo. You know, the music talent has elevated so much that it's become uh, an event on its own. Bird's Nest tickets start at $75, depending on the night. You can still get tickets, though. I'm told for those big performances, tickets will sell out quickly. You can find more information on ABC15.com. In Scottsdale, I'm Claudia Rupsich, ABC15 Arizona. Excited for that. Now, uplifting Arizona through a story of strength. A Gilbert man celebrating an achievement 30 years in the making. In 1991, Alan Olson suffered a stroke mid-hike on Piestawa Peak. He was airlifted to the hospital. He spent years in rehab, relearning how to walk and talk. But this week, he once again faced that mountain and won, making it to the top alongside his family and friends. I just felt so relieved and so blessed that I that I that I went up there with my wife and we both did it. We've both gone through this together. Even though she didn't have the show, she's been by me 110 percent. Wow, so inspiring to see him come back and conquer that mountain that almost uh, took his life uh, a few years ago. Now Olson tells us he's admittedly sore from his climb, but could not feel better about conquering the peak. We've got to update his shirt now. We need to cross out that victim and put survivor no because doubt. that's what he is. Paestoa Peak is no joke. My knee won't even let me do that one. So yeah, way to go. Hips won't either. Time now 611. Case numbers are surging. Still ahead at 630 this morning. The concerning trend when it comes to children who are too young to be back and finding a source of water straight ahead, an impact earth report. We learn more about how the city of Goodyear is preparing as more and more people flock to the West Valley. Also a heads up before we get to the break here, I'm giving you a live look at the Superstition Freeway US 60 westbound. It is closed right now between Greenfield and Gilbert Road. Ahead at 630, we're going to be checking in with our Megan Thompson. She's got a full list of construction closures, including this one happening this weekend in the Valley. As one of the fastest growing cities in the entire country of uh, Goodyear, uh, they have mainly depended on groundwater for decades. But with water shortages becoming commonplace, the city took action and now has an additional water source, river water. And in an impact earth report, meteorologist Jorge Torres visited the West Valley to show how they are expanding their water supply. Millions of gallons of water now flowing each day through the city of Goodyear's new surface water treatment facility. Its source, the Colorado River via the Central Arizona Project. It's been years in the making that will benefit the city's 60,000 customers. Over the past two years, we've been constructing a pipeline and treatment facility to bring surface water and add that to our portfolio. The surface water that flows through here goes through several treatments before eventually flowing into people's homes. One of the ways the city of Goodyear treats its water here is actually by pouring sand, which clarifies the water underneath. So there's tiny particles that are dissolved in the water when we receive it, and what we're essentially doing is trying to bind those particles and get them to settle out. The city and its water rights weren't affected by the water shortage declaration on the Colorado that was implemented earlier this year. The folks here understand that adding more water sources to its portfolio is crucial, especially as Goodyear continues to grow. Groundwater pumping is heavily regulated in Arizona, and it's not very sustainable. There's, um, we can have drawdown, so it's really important that we balance the water we put back in the ground with what we pull out. And so having a renewable resource like a surface water supply is really uh, beneficial for a utility provider. The facility has room for growth, meaning an additional 8 million gallons of water could flow through here in the future. For Impact Earth in Goodyear, Jorge Torres, ABC 15, Arizona. Well, hundreds of old Christmas trees, they're putting, getting put to good use today, giving fish a new habitat in Saguaro Lake. Arizona Game and Fish staff are spending their Saturday working with volunteers to turn the donated trees into a makeshift reef. Now, this is for bass and other types of fish like catfish. Experts say that it will help the lake's ecosystem thrive. That is a great idea and use of those trees. 
Well, it is time to celebrate 100 years of Apache Junction. The town was founded back in 1922 this Saturday. The town is marking the big anniversary with a whole day of free fun. And they have a wild, wild west theme for everybody to take part in. There will be live music, a car show, food and beer. And for the kids, how about a bounce house? Of course, a petting zoo is also going to be uh, put up there as well. You can uh, do pony rides. The night will end with a special fireworks display. This is happening at Prospector Park from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Have not been there yet. So a whole lot of fun happening out there. I'm still like really cool with the Christmas trees. I'm still yeah, thinking me about too. that. That that's is a, so that's neat. such a great idea. Yeah. So cool. I guess that means I should probably take mine down and put it to better use. Okay, well, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get a check of that most accurate forecast. Now, if you're going to be getting out, whatever it's going to be, it's going to be a great weekend to do it, although today it will be cloudy, but will stay dry. And I think those clouds will help kind of ease us into these slightly warmer temperatures. So we are giving you the green light, just reminding you to hydrate, especially if you're going out on a hike today. Our temperatures right now are pretty fair. They're in the 40s across most of the valley here. Low 40s in Maricopa at 41. It's 43 in Levine and Ahwatukee this morning. Mid 40s in Mesa, upper 40s in Glendale, those Deer Valley neighborhoods, and in Wickenburg. Across the rest of the state, we've managed Managed to stay above the freezing mark statewide so far, but we're close to it in Flagstaff at 34 degrees. It's 37 in Window Rock, 34 in Heber. Payson has dipped into the upper 30s this morning as well, but otherwise, and we're at 36 in Safford, but otherwise we're in the 40s and 50s across the southern western portion of the state. Overnight hours, we did see some passing showers and snow showers up north and in the northwestern corners of our state, but we're drying out now. So if you're going out for a hike this morning, know that that sun does rise today at 7:33 this morning so plenty of time to get out there get it together get on top of the mountain and watch it from the top maybe bring your coffee with you go do an easy one like hole in the rock or something we'll be in the 50s though by nine o'clock this morning and we'll stay in the 50s until lunchtime when we transition into the 60s sunset today is at 5 37 so cooler morning but warmer this afternoon we'll peak today at 68 degrees in areas like scottsdale gilbert chandler and maricopa it'll be 67 in levine surprise and good your anthem topping out at 64 degrees. We're pretty much on par for the average for this time of year. This is what it should feel like here in the valley in early January. Across the rest of the state, certainly we'll have cooler temperatures up north in the 40s today, mid 40s in Flagstaff in the Grand Canyon. 50s across the central portion of the state will fall just short of 60 degrees in Sedona today, but we will be in the upper 60s out west in areas like Bullhead City through Quartzsite, 70s in Yuma and upper 60s across the southern portion of our state. If you are going to be spending the weekend in Flagstaff, we'll be dry, we'll be cooler in the 40s, but then take note that on Monday and Tuesday, we do have a slight change chance for some scattered snow showers in the forecast. But for this weekend, those snow showers are passing on already, so we'll just have those clouds. We'll have some clearing in the overnight hours, and then Sunday will be mostly clear skies before more clouds start to stream in to start that new work week. Also, Today we're in the upper 60s. Tomorrow we work our way back into the 70s and we're going to linger there through the start of the work week. And then we've got that 20% chance of rain in the valley forecast Monday and Tuesday as we get some unsettled weather patterns. So I'm going to break that down for you and show you our best chances for potential rain here in the valley coming up in that seven day in just a little bit. All right, no, hey, thank you. We've got some huge news for the Red Sea as the Cardinals get ready for their playoff game. The comeback that we could see in the wild card round. It really will be a wild card, that's for sure. But first, whether you're driving into your diving into your first DIY project or maybe you're just looking for some home improvement inspiration, we've got you covered. We have a preview of this weekend's home and garden show up next. Stay with us on this Saturday morning, Arizona. Thanks for watching ABC 15 Arizona, streaming 24 seven on Roku and these streaming devices. New year, new home projects. If you're looking for the latest trends or maybe you're getting ready to sell your home and want to fix things up, the Maricopa County Home and Garden Show is happening today. So Heather Filippo is joining us to talk more about what we can expect. Hey, Heather. Hi, thanks so much for having me. 
So a lot of people are getting ready to sell their homes. It's a hot market right now. And of course, people are buying those up too. So what are some of the big trends that we're seeing in home improvement right now? Yeah, so, you know, kitchen improvement, backsplash, little things like that are super important. And believe it or not, landscaping, outdoor improvements. On our main stage this year, we have a backsplash um, DIY, do-it-yourself uh, backsplash laying seminar. Um, that's going to be great. Actually, all of our main stage seminars this year are awesome. Uh, we have cooking demonstrations and anything that you go to at our main stage this year, you actually walk away with a free gift. So uh, you can't lose. <laughs> you really get to see, no, I can do this. And it's so much better than just watching a YouTube video for inspo also. And then you've got some other things where um, I know you can do crafts too. So even maybe if you're not looking to do some big demo, you've got little things too that people will be able to get their hands into. Oh yeah, we have four handmade craft sessions a day where local artisans will walk you through how to make your own craft, get to take it home after the show. I mean, there's so much that you can walk away with this weekend. Now you guys have this one really interesting trend that we've seen nationwide and it's always so fascinating to me, the tiny home trend. What is that all about and what are we gonna see there? Oh, our tiny home street of dreams this year is so fun. We have 14 different homes ranging from wooden yurts to converted vehicles to luxury mini mansions. I mean, even if you don't want to walk away with something, you got to come out just to tour these homes. I'd say just the name alone of the dream street that you're going to be on is so cool. And I love that some of these, I think people think automatically this is where you live, but also some of them have been converted for like businesses on the go, small businesses. Yeah, we have one of my favorite homes on the street this year is just a little studio pod, you know, glass slide doors, and it's just set up like an office that you can have in your backyard. That's so neat. Okay, yeah. so um, lay out the pricing for me, any deals or specials that are going on? Yeah, so $6 at the door for adults, $1 for children's th children 3 to 13. Anything under that is free. Um, you can go online and uh, to maricopacountyhomeshows.com to get $2 off your admission. If you wear your Cardinals gear, you get a free koozie. I mean, you name it. You have a January birthday, you get a free gift at our info booth. You just, you can't go wrong. A lot of great deals to be had. Heather, thanks so much for giving us the preview. I know people can't wait to see the return of this one. That's for sure. Yeah, thanks for having me.